fish on, fish on a threaded worm. Right. In a slow morning, I put on the threaded worm, and 10 minutes later, fish on. How big he is, I kind of turned on him, trying to, trying to kind of keep up with him here. There he was at 20 feet. I was running a uh, naked threaded worm with a silver horde gold star uh, rudder. Cut down on the line twist. Um, we'd mark some, some pretty nice fish through this stretch here. And uh, be darned if that didn't do the trick. The going gets tough. Oh, he's still there. Break out the worms, right? One and a half miles an hour, kind of a classic presentation. On the lead core, of course. Head shaking going on now. Coming to life now. All right. Nice fish. All right. Here we go. Nice Collins Lake Rainbow. Um, couldn't lay off that threaded worm. There's the worm. And of course, I was running one of those uh, one of those slow death hooks. So get this guy on the stringer. And uh, think lead core lines obsolete? Well, think again. Look at those big beautiful rainbows. I got these fish while trolling 15 to 20 feet deep and I didn't use a downrigger. If you don't want the expense or hassle of using a downrigger, pick up one of my yellow lead core rods in the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store and get ready to yell fish on. Just like that, baby. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. I'm here to talk to you today about one of the most effective offerings you can use for trout trolling. This is one of those things that you've got to be able to rig and fish when the going gets tough. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the threaded night crawler. Um, now, let's go over the leader and then I'll show you how I thread a worm. This hook, I actually learned about this just a few weeks ago on YouTube. It was a comment to one of my past videos. Um, for years, I had been using light wire um, black bass plastic worm hooks and I've been kinking the shank to make the worm rotate. Having the worm rotate is critical but I'll talk more about that in a bit. This is called a slow death hook and let me get it up close to the camera here. It's actually a walleye hook and now from that angle it looks pretty much like a normal round bend hook but if you turn it you see that bend in the shank? It's got a bend in the shank and it's also got some bait holder barbs up here. Now, why a walleye hook? Well, walleye guys, they pull a lot of things that are similar to what we pull out here in the West Coast for trout. They pull threaded crawlers. They pull leeches. We don't have those, but I guarantee you if we did, they would work. They'd be dynamite. And uh, they pull a lot of stuff behind spinners and blades, just like they're trout fishing. So this is a hook they use. And what that bend in the, in the shank does is it simplifies the rolling process. You don't have to mess with the worm. You don't have to bend your own hook shanks. You put one of these hooks on the line and uh, you are ready to rock and roll. That is a fine wire hook. It's very sharp. I believe this is a Mustad, but a lot of different companies 
make these hooks, they're called the slow death hook. Now, I've got this one tied to eight pound test fluorocarbon line. I like to go with eight or 10. You're not accomplishing anything if you're using fluorocarbon by going lighter. The fish find fluorocarbon, you know, it's virtually invisible, so why go lighter? You want to catch a big giant trout. I mean, I'm, I'm always looking for a 10 pound trout. So you don't want to be going with four pound leader material. So like I say, this one is on eight pound fluorocarbon. So, and, and this leader is pretty typical. It's about 30 inches long. And on the upper end, this might be hard to see. I've just got a double overhand loop knot. With this, I could troll this naked by just attaching this to a trolling swivel. I could shorten it up and put it behind a Dodger, like one of the SEP Strike Masters. Or I could troll it behind a set of the Max Lure Mylar Flashers or a conventional set like the Rooster Trolls, you know, metal flashers. So, but that's how you rig it up. Put that uh, double overhand loop knot at the top end. And the hook, I tie the hook on using a Palomar knot. Why? It's a simple knot and it retains 90 plus percent of the line's breaking strength. No need to reinvent the wheel here and use a real complex knot. The Palomar is easy to tie in all conditions. Super strong, super effective. That's all you need to know. Here in my hand, I've got a pack of Easy Pack Night Crawlers from the Oro Dam Bait Company. Tony up there, he does a great job. He offers the finest bait available. When you get crawlers from him, you always know they're fat and lively and sassy and ready for action. So anyway, let me open this up. Some guys use mini crawlers and they work fine, um, but I prefer a full size night crawler. Some guys prefer to break their worms in half. That's something you have to experiment with. Um, there's no telling. Sometimes a fish want a one inch worm. Sometimes they want a big worm. I'm a big fish guy. I like to start out with a full or nearly full crawler. Go from there. Let me pick one of these bad boys out. Look at those big beautiful worms. So you are going to get your fingers dirty. Let me grab one. That's a monster right there. That's a, that's a good worm. Let me put the lid back on here. I don't want a bunch of escapees. They know what's coming. <laughs> Okay, there's my worm, and it's bad. It's bad to be a worm. Just let me say that. I'm gonna actually set the leader down for a second. Keep popping in and out of the, the frame here. This is, this is bad filmmaking, but uh, we're trying to catch fish here, not make a movie. So how do you thread a worm? You wanna start out at the tail end. That's the blunt end, not the pointy end. You want the worm threader to come out the pointy end. You want him pointy end first as he's pulling through the water. So. I come up about an inch from the tail, and here's a worm threader. It's simply a handle with a hollow brass tube attached to it. Take that, uh, that needle, that, that pointy end, insert it in your worm about an inch up from the bottom, from the tail, pop it through the skin, and then gently just work that worm down down that threader without putting any more brakes in it. Just kind of work it down there like you're pulling on a sock, I guess. If your sock was, you know, a worm and it was covered in poop. There you go. See the threader is protruding right from the tip of the worm. That worm is still wriggling and moving around on there like that. So now the end of that brass tube is hollow and you want to take your hook point, you want to put it right in that hollow end. Insert the hook right in there like so and then pull down here and you want to put some, you want to put some pressure on this leader so that the, uh, the hook stays in that tube. So I, I got a, a fair amount of pressure on there. I'm actually bending the rod a little bit. Next step is just start feeding that worm up and over the hook takes a little finesse you got to work at him but he'll go on there just like that now, I like to bring the hook out about that much but I like to leave a little curl at the end so where the worms just kind of starting to come over the hook shank like so just like that okay so now Personally, I pull a lot of worms behind blades. I pull them behind dodgers. I pull them behind flashers. But my ultimate favorite way to troll a worm is absolutely naked. I would hook that right on a trolling swivel and I'd either run it off of lead core line 
and we're off a downrigger at whatever level I think the trout are. I want to troll that between, I don't know, one mile an hour is a little slow for me. I like kokanee speed, a mile and a half an hour. And with that, uh, with that curl in the tail and that bend in that hook shank, that worm is going to roll through the water just, just nice and gentle, just like that. So when a trout comes and bites this, a lot of times you're going to see boom, boom, boom. Don't be impatient. They'll come up, they'll nip at it, they'll eat away at that tail section. But nine times out of ten, the trout is going to stay with that worm until he gets it deep in his mouth and he gets hooked and it's fish on, baby. This is one of the most effective offerings you can pull when the going gets tough. It's real meat and they have a real hard time resisting it. Even though, who would think of seeing a worm swimming through the water at a mile and a half an hour? Well, they're not that smart. They love worms, they love real meat, and once they get a little taste of that, they're gonna keep on picking at it and hitting it until they get hooked. I'll catch you next time. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This is Kel Kellogg signing off. Remember, when the going gets tough, get those worms out and make sure that that worm is rotating through the water nice and steadily. That's one of the keys. That's what draws the fish in to get that first taste. Anyhow, I'll catch you next time. Kel Kellogg.